What we have here is a Mazda 6, it's a 2004 um, Mazda. It has a 2.3 liter engine. Let's see if you can see it. 2.3. Two thousand four, and what is doing, or what it was doing, was um, showing a Toronto code P zero seven four five EPC circuit fault, or uh, electronic pressure control circuit fault, or it's also considered the line pressure solenoid, and. This vehicle was brought in from another shop. What they did was put a transmission inside and I guess they end up with this code here, P0745. Well, what I initially did was hook up the scanner and I saw that there was no amp readings um, on the scanner. So it showed no amperage readings and it was high line pressure because with this P0745 what it would do, it would have very harsh engagement. So if you put it in reverse, it would hit hard. Put it in drive, it would engage very hard. Um, very hard. So I hooked up the scanner. And after hooking up the scanner, the next thing I wanted to do was to do a test to see if the solenoid was within its proper reading. So what I did was take the computer down. Now I'll go over this quickly. I took the computer down on this side. The computer is on the passenger's the driver side, excuse me, and it's up there close to where the the uh, where I say the the uh, kick panel is way up there, and you can see the computer here. Okay, and. If you see there, I got two pins inside. So I was back probing. Um, the wires that I was back probing was, let's see. It will be a, a green with an orange stripe and a. A green with a white stripe okay so I had the connector I took this out and what I was trying to look for is the ohms to see if I can get the ohms the ohms was like 2.7 ohms to I think the range of it is like 2.7 to 7 ohms so in between everything would be good as far as the ohms for the solenoid well I was getting a lot of weird readings from that, this is the line pressure solenoid. I was getting a lot of weird, weird, weird readings. So what I did, I, I kept my meter on these two pins, and then I went up to the transmission area. <clears throat> and down here, you see the case connector here. Okay, and what I did while this was on, and while looking at the meter, which was here, I did a wiggle test. Okay, so what I did, I just wiggled the wire. And while I was wiggling it, while it was connected to the solenoids, I, the readings was jumping around. And, okay, just jumping, jumping, jumping all around. So, what I came to find out is that the the red with the green wire the pins here the the female terminals were open they were spread too too much so i had to take this part out and crimp them just a little push them in together on the red and then I took the green with a white and did the same thing, then pushed it down on there while I'm still on the EPC circuit or line pressure circuit. And I did the wiggle test again. And it, it held steady. 
okay so it held steady after that I hooked everything back up hooked the computer back up started up as soon as I put it in gear check engine light come on trans AT trans light come on still throw the same code P0745 EPC circuit fault okay so then what I did I looked at the green with the red and the white and the green with the white and see where they were located on the pre connector here then I took my meter and touched the terminal that the wires correspond to at the case connector now from there I was measuring the solenoid so the pins here and let me see which pin it is it's it's one of these pins here and the other one I believe is right here okay so I think it was this one and this one um, and I was getting weird readings there also alright so what that means is I had to go and drop the pan so I can get to the solenoid to see if it was the internal wire harness or if it was the solenoid itself that was bad you know um, so actually this vehicle had two problems the very first problem was the P0745 and when the the shop changed the transmission they might have only had an issue with this wiring because this was bad it was not making a good connection and they probably changed and put a bad transmission in that had a bad solenoid so now this was a two-step process so what I did again I dropped the pan and when I took the pan off I took off the solenoid and then I tested the solenoid directly and I got a bunch of high readings on that solenoid so I'm going to show you what readings I was getting while I was testing this solenoid okay okay now I'm going to have to I'm going to touch it to where is it it's two terminals I'm going to touch one terminal touch one of one of the terminals here and touch the red lead to the other terminal and then we're going to look and see what the readings are on the meter See, 144.2, okay, ohms, 143. It's supposed to be 2.7 to 7 point something ohms. That's what it's supposed to be. But you see that it has a higher resistance right there. That's not supposed to be. So... that's this solenoid here now I went and got me a new solenoid and we're going to see what this reading is going to be so when I touch this can you see that 4.6 ohms it's holding steady at 4.5 4.6 so it's within reading uh, is within the uh, capacity that it's supposed to be now the computer on the car could pick that up you know the computer on a car can be your best friend when it's not lying when it's lying you're messed up it'll throw you all off it'll make you think everything else is bad you might as well you may end up keeping that car for a week or two because you don't want to fault the computer but in this case it looks like it was telling the truth because the resistance is 4.5 now I go to the, the solenoid that the computer says it was bad and there you go 136 135 and all this other stuff okay so this solenoid definitely is bad definitely bad now this is what you would see if the solenoid was connected 
to the internal wire harness in the transmission, you go up by the computer, you would see that. Okay, but you couldn't stop there because if you're checking from the computer, you, you, you have to see, okay, there's a lot of things in between that could be affected, which uh, was the issue with the wiggle test on the, um, on the case connector. Um, so I had to go two steps here. The solenoid ended up still being bad. Okay, now I'm going to show you where this solenoid goes on this transmission. Okay. All right, I'm in the front. This is the bumper right here. So facing this transmission on this side. Here, let me see where are we. There are three big solenoids on this side. These are shift solenoids. Okay. Now the EPC solenoid, it's right here. Okay, as a bolt, you take it out, take the plug out. The wires on this Mazda is blue and orange. Okay, you may not always want to go with that because I see another blue and orange down here. So if you go with the wire, you may get confused. You got to know what solenoid with solenoid placement. So you got some shift solenoids here, one, two, and three. And you got the big EPC sitting here. So you just take it out with a bolt. Okay. Um, take it out, and then we uh, put the new one in. But now, let me do something. Let me hook that bad solenoid back up here, hook the transmission case connector in, and then see what the reading will be bet at the computer. Okay, let's see what it'll show at the computer. Okay, I have that solenoid connected uh, inside the transmission. This is the bad one. Now what I'm going to do, I also hook the transmission case connector up with the vehicle wire harness. Now I'm going to go to the computer that's on the inside and I'm going to test from the computer down so we can see what we would have saw um, if you test it without taking all this apart.